Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. It's time once again for another uh, one of our Gospel at Work segments, and today I am tickled to have as a guest Pastor Jody Moore. Welcome, Jody. Thank you so very much, R.C. It's good to be with you, my friend. It's it's been a long time since we've uh, been able to see each other in person, but it's great to catch you uh, virtually through Zoom as so many of our meetings and uh, gatherings and connections have been over the last year and a half. Absolutely. And that's going to come up, I'm sure, in our conversation. Jody, in addition to being the pastor of Transformation Church in Chino, California, he is bivocational and also works in the field of human resources. So this is a wonderful, uh, I think, mixture for us to look at these questions of how the gospel impacts us at work. As soon as you mentioned this uh, uh, HR kind of work, it made me think of uh, my own experience and, and uh, having uh, lost my job uh, at Ligonier Ministries because of my own sin, my own failure, and you know, recognizing that even inside the church, we really don't have a real clear understanding about how to deal with uh, these kinds of failures. Uh, and I believe that's a, a big part of why we have a lot of uh, burnout in uh, pastors as well. But tell us a little bit, you, you understand the broad question. Let me just lay it in your lap there and say, uh, as a HR professional, when you're going into work and you're thinking about the work of Christ on your behalf, how does that impact you in your job? Wow. Um, great, great question. And I'll, I'll tell you up, up front, it is a, it's a work, it's a work in progress uh, because you go into, especially in my field in human resources, I'm in corporate America, I'm in the marketplace. You go in with your set of values, biblical values that you believe in, that you espouse, knowing that at times they might run contrary uh, to the ethos or to the direction that a company is trying to go in. At the end of the day, you know, my mandate is to be faithful to the gospel, be faithful to what I believe, but also be a good steward of what God has given me in this opportunity right. to work uh, in this organization. And what does that, what does that stewardship look like? You know, how do I live out my biblical values um, in, in the marketplace? That, that doesn't come easy. For me, it's, it's very practical uh, at times. You know, I'm asking myself the question, am I being, number one, uh, true vertically, but I, am I also extending uh, the love, the grace, and the mercy, and the faithfulness of Christ horizontally? I think when you really theologically look at the personhood of God, and you realize who he is and, and what he embodies, he's a God of mercy, he's a God of grace, he's a God of justice, he's, a, he's faithful, he's patient, he's steadfast, uh, he's long-suffering. You know, can I bring a modicum of that in my dealings with those that I work with so that I'm an expression of his, of his those characteristics to the people that I work with? So that's what you try to do. It, it Does it always work? No. Do you flub the line sometimes? Yes. Do you stumble at times? Yes. But I think God is looking at the, the you know, the intent to be faithful to that. Well, and I, I, I think you really hit the nail on the head. What is the Apostle Paul uh, who says of us that we are epistles that are read by men. And you're, mm-hmm. you're in a place where, on the one hand, uh, there's probably, uh, <laughs> remember those old uh, that's that trading company commercials with the little babies yeah. uh, who were talking about, tr- you know, date or trading their stocks and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And one, the kid says, seems like that's frowned upon around here. <laughs> I'm guessing there are uh, convictions that you have that are probably not, as you say, in line with the corporate ethos, but you're also, and, and so that's hard and a challenge, 
but probably if I'm guessing right, you, you have uh, interaction with people at some really vulnerable moments. Maybe the company has to downsize or maybe the person has been found in a scandal of some sort. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're, the world is crashing down around them and what a wonderful thing to be able to exhibit uh, the character of God in front of them. I, you, you mentioned vertical. Uh, one of our board members at Dunamis, Pastor Mike Drury, is, uh, uh, was our pastor, Lisa and my pastor, for uh, several years before we started uh, Sovereign Grace. Yeah. And he would always talk about how the grace of God should come into us and flow out of us. And uh, that is really not complicated, but it's still a very powerful idea, I think. And, and it's wonderful that you're thinking in that direction uh, when you're at work. Is there, uh, let me, put, how do I put this? Is there already in the company where you're working or with some of the, employees of the company is there already a tension maybe they know that your other vocation is as a pastor they know that you are a bible believer is there people coming up defensively toward you great question so let me let me, just a little context and a little uh, context a little backstory uh where i where i am now i've only been in this particular company for a month okay i was in healthcare and then got laid off out of healthcare what is interesting is I've been, I've been bivocational for 20 something years now. I've been in human resources for a long time. I never go into the company at all saying, Hey, I'm a pastor. I pastor a church, right? Uh, uh, this, they always find out somehow. Okay. So, so, so the first time I was working for Starwood hotels, uh, you may remember Starwood W West and sure, Sheridan yeah. till Marriott gobbled them up. I was the uh, director of HR. Um, was there working almost six months. I had to fax something. This is during a time when fax, not scanning or anything. <laughs> I had to fax something to my boss. Mm -hmm. I faxed it from home. Well, my home fax machine at the time was my church fax machine. Uh -huh. So when my boss gets the fax at the top, it says, Pastor or Reverend Jody Moore at that time praised Tabernacle Bible Church. Uh -huh. So the next day I'm on the phone with my boss and I'm talking to her about an issue. And um, another leader had just used profanity with me. And I was telling, I was like, you know, I'm in this meeting and, you know, he got really agitated and he cursed at me. And she said, how dare he curse at a pastor like that? <laughs> and I fell out laughing. Like, how did you, how did you know? And that's what she right. told me about the fax machine. I could give story after story. Every job I've ever had, they end up finding out. But I don't go in declaring it. Right. Uh, but I will say this. Over time, they, they notice a marked difference with me. Um, they notice how I approach things. They notice how in the face of hostility, I don't necessarily get rattled or respond in kind. You can't make that stuff up, RC. You can't. Right. That that comes from the authentic self of of Second Corinthians, you know, uh, five, uh, what eighteen, nineteen. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ Jesus, therefore they are a new creation. That comes from that. You you can't play that off. And so, at some point in time, people see that distinction of how you navigate through trouble, how you handle certain things, how you show up. Uh, uh, in meetings and how you show up in front of employees. One, one last thing to that too. I think I tell people all the time, especially those in leadership. So my job is to coach executive leaders and what have you. Um, strong, effective leaders of today in corporate America, one of the key ingredients or the key, key qualities you must have, you must be self-aware. And so I think when they see me, living that out, but from a totally different angle of, yeah, I'm, I'm self-aware. I can't tell you this, but I'm self-aware of just how sinful I am. I'm self-aware right. <laughs> just of, of how much in need of grace I am. I'm, I'm self-aware of just how inadequate and how, how I, you know, my sufficiency must be tethered to the person of Jesus Christ and my sufficiency can't be in myself or my education or my position. 
they see that, even if it's unspoken. And I think that resonates with people. Oh, there's no question. And I, I would add close to self-awareness is uh, something as simple as self-control. I imagine that when there are sort of fire alarms going off at the yeah. company, that you coming in and having that peace, which passes understanding yeah. uh, is a powerful witness as well. And, and people uh, often gravitate towards that and, and appreciate that. You know, I, I, a couple things I wanted to mention as I was listening to you, I, I had as a guest, uh, oh, three or four weeks ago in this same segment, a uh, pastor by the name of Mike Chastain. Okay. Uh, but I gave it a, that, that particular week, I gave it a light, slightly different title to fit a little better. It was the gospel at school. Okay. Because Mike Chastain is like 70 years old. He pastors a church in Georgia. And the state of Georgia recently passed a law that basically said anybody over 65 can go to any of our schools for free. Oh, wow. Now, now this is a fellow who is a graduate of the Citadel Military Academy in Charleston, South Carolina, who has two master's degrees. And he signs up as a freshman at a local uh, college in the town that he's in precisely so that he has opportunity to interact with these wow. students. And wow. he communicates what's going on. He has, puts out little emails uh, called the diary of a 70 year old freshman, something like that. And, uh, and tells these stories and he does a great job of challenging the, the common accepted ideas, but he is an expert at doing it in a winsome and gracious way. And what I've come to see watching him and try to follow in watching him and how I interact, uh, I teach uh, at a local community college, right now teaching Introduction to Ethics. Uh, the perception of the Christian in the world is that we are those people who think we know a better way and we're trying to tell other people how to follow us on this better way. Mm -hmm. And when instead our posture is <clears throat> we are beggars and we've been given bread and we know where you can find it. And when, when you really own that humility, as you, the language you use, the, our, our dependence upon Christ, when that's evident, then all of a sudden so many barriers come down. And you can say, oh, by the way, uh, that perspective you have on this issue I think is out of whack. Uh, I know that I've had out of whack perspectives on issues and I know even more so that our bigger problem, I say this in my ethics class all the time. I say, why is it that ethicists spend all their time trying to figure out what's right and wrong when everybody knows that even when we know what's right, we don't do it. Right. That's the question. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 <laughs> RC, I'd even say it's, it's funny what you just said. Um, you know, people think that we know, the better way and we're trying to show it to them. I think where they miss it and maybe we miss it even in our presentation is, you know, they're thinking that our better way is some sort of methodology. Right. Yeah. Thing. And in actuality, if we go by what Jesus says, our better way is a person is, is a person. So yeah. it's not about trying to show you some sort of method. My better way is actually the embodiment of someone. Let me, and it's about relationship with that person. Right. <laughs> if, yeah, if my, I my better way, way is acknowledging, I don't know the way. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's my better way. And so it's, it's, I, I think when we approach it like that as believers, I think it, uh, it, it creates a, a safer space for people to, to want to engage us around yeah. the things that we believe in. Well, I think so. And I, I think it's also wise uh, as you're thinking through your first month in this new situation, there's probably going to be some differences uh, today than there will be a year from now and another difference maybe five years from now if you're in the same place. You you build up uh, capital, you build up credibility, uh, and you have opportunity. Again, I it's almost like, well, let me say it this way. Um, last week, last Friday, I went to a job fair. There's a, a, a one of the largest employers here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, mm -hmm. is Brotherhood Mutual Insurance. Okay. Uh, it's an insurance company that specializes in doing insurance for churches and parachurch ministries. Uh, they've got something like 65,000 churches under their uh, 
coverage. And so it's very strong evangelical Christian organizations, very, very faithful for generations. And I, I went to the job fair thinking, well, you know, and you, as an HR person, you can probably tell me how, what a bad idea this is, but I thought to myself, you know, I don't, none of my skill set immediately fits right in with what I know happens at this company. Mm-hmm. But you people may be able to look at my uh, CV and say, here's how we can put this set of skills to work. And so I'm sort of going in and saying, do you have anything for me? And But what I want them to say, <laughs> I want them to say, uh, hey, our, uh, our corporate uh, – chaplain right just retired yeah and uh, we you know we'd like you to interview for that job i would love that kind of a job uh i've got a friend who does that for the actual largest employer in fort wayne which is sweetwater the sound wow. equipment people uh and he's the chaplain there again strong christian company uh but as i'm thinking about you and your job i'm thinking you may be the closest people these the closest person these people ever come to that is in a role that gives you some room to act like a chaplain, wouldn't you say? Abs- absolutely, it, it, and that's where, that's where the complexity comes in, that's where sort of the tension comes in. So you gotta think, uh, I'm in, you know, if I'm investigating a, a complaint of sexual harassment in the uh-huh. organization, and I'm dealing with that person who is the accused, uh, uh, and you know, I've been able to substantiate um, the claim and the accusation. Well, I'm I'm going to be letting that person go. Right. How how do I let that person go? Do I remember? Do I approach them with this mindset that um, even though marred, even though distorted, even though done some bad things, this person is still created in the image of God, and that they are warranted? I, I should approach them. Uh, you know, based upon the inherent worth of that dignity Amen. And, and how I talk to them and how I handle them and even, you know, doing my best without necessarily bringing up the gospel, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, literally, but allowing them to, to receive grace and allowing the grace to do its work on it. So now you're going to receive the justice. You're going to, yeah. you're yeah. going to be walked outside out, out of the door. Right. You're going to be asked to box all your stuff. You're going to, yeah. You're going to, you're going to be asked to leave the organization. But, but seriously, what's on my mind, RC is how much, how much can I, in, in this, in this time, in this period, be a reservoir of God's grace to that person. And maybe without me being able to speak the gospel, allowing the grace of God to do its work and to, and to speak the message on its own. That's the yeah. challenge for me. It, I, I get that it's a challenge, but you know, it, it strikes me. I, I've been uh, trying to make the case regularly that uh, it is our friends uh, on the left, culturally mm-hmm. speaking, who really are the Pharisees and the legalists. Oh, absolutely. The, the whole of cancel culture is we have no room for any grace or any forgiveness. And so how ironic, that would be one of those places where uh, your colleagues are going to be screaming for blood Mm -hmm. and, you know, no grace whatsoever. And the Christian humbly comes alongside and says, well, you know, this is wrong. This is bad. Um, But I know that it's something that uh, apart from God's grace, I could be guilty. That's that's exactly what I was about to say. (laughs) (laughs) But for the grace of God, yep. there go I. And buddy, believe me, whatever's my stuff is all a level playing field at the foot of, at the foot of the cross. And so Amen. I've got to approach it with a crystal centric view of, hey, you know, at the at the cross, this is all this is all handled. And right. and and but for the grace of God and and but for Christ redeeming me with His blood, I'm in the same place and I'm in the same the same condition, you know? Absolutely. Yes. Amen. Well, listen, we are uh, out of time. I want to make sure uh, that our audience has an opportunity to hear anything more from you. Is there a Twitter account? Is there a blog or a pod? A- any place? I'm sure, assume your sermons are up at the uh, church website. 
what sure. would you tell people? Yeah. I mean, cause you have really uh, brought the wisdom today and I want people oh, to get yeah. more. So where would we send them? Pre appreciate that. Uh, Transformation church, I E I E stands for the inland empire. Uh, that's where our, that's our website. Uh, that's uh, you can catch us on YouTube there. Uh, my Twitter is uh, Pastor Bottom Dash Jody uh, uh, at Twitter. So I, I'd love to engage with you. This is this has been great, and and I think the next time if you have me on again, oh, I will. See, I, I think the next discussion then is also how do then I sort of uh, transition from that world to the work that I do at the church because I. Here's the challenge for me. I have to be careful how I lead my church people because that's not corporate. Right. I, you know, so there's the, there's the, you know, I'm at corporate, I'm Jody Moore, corporate officer, blah, blah, blah. Yep. But at church, I'm your shepherd. Right. <laughs> you know, All I, I'm, I'm to bleed. You're bleeding. I'm to get, I'm to bleed, get, get bloody with you and to get yes. dirty with you where yes. there's so. Yeah, that could be for the next conversation, my friend. I really appreciate you having me on today. Well, absolutely. We'll look forward to having you back real soon. And uh, I, I hope that next time, well, we'll be do it sooner than it will be that we can actually see face-to-face. -face, but I hope both of those things come soon. God yeah. bless you, brother. And uh, God bless the saints under your care Thank and you. the uh, employees under your uh, human resources role. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Take care. God bless. All right. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsprouljr.com. And join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.